Okay. Well, I'm very excited to come to you today uh, to talk about something different than the AVS siphon, which shares some similarities. The above bed siphon shares some similarities with some other siphons, such as the loop siphon and the uh, uh, U siphon and so on. But uh, I'm talking about my new system that I'm setting up. You know, the Bible says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. So it looks like I'm on the right track because my plans were succeeding and everything I had envisioned. Now, I had, it's taken me about a half a day to get this because I forgot little things. I got so excited trying to set it up. I got some, forgot, <clears throat> excuse me, some little and basic things that I knew to do and didn't do. But you've all heard of the chop and the chop two and the chip and the chip fist and all these different kinds of aquaponic systems that you can build. So I've come up with my own kind of, of system. Uh, this is kind of, if you, I know you've heard of the lift system, the airlift system, and what they're trying to do with the airlift system, to my knowledge, is use an airlift pump, get all of their sump tanks, fish tanks, you know, as close as they can to level, and then use an airlift to pump it up to the top and let it flow back down, and they're eliminating their water pump by using an airlift pump and putting oxygen in the water at the same time, thereby reducing their electrical cost. Well, what I'm doing is in reverse of that, uh, and uh, I'm... I had said before, and I even mentioned my system in a, I was working on a comment, that I want to start for my sump tank, pump the water up to my grow beds and have it flow back downhill. Because the only place I need pressure is in my grow beds. I need to be able to control the amount of water that comes into each grow bed individually. And so that's the only place I need pressure. The rest of it can just flow. So what I've designed it after, calling it natural aquaponics. Just natural aquaponics that seemed uh, uh, shorter than stair-step aquaponics, but I've designed it after my Heavenly Father's design of a stair-step waterfall. Uh, you know, just stair-step waterfall coming down. And so I thought, okay, well, I'll do that. And uh, I had watched some other guys uh, putting, uh, I think it was a Vortex, I can't remember the name of it, but they were using, uh, putting oxygen back into the water as, you know, into their fish tank. When I looked at it and I looked, I thought it was interesting, but I was able to do it with my sump tank, as I showed earlier. And it seemed like it was maybe a little bit easier than I thought it would be. And, and uh, so uh, I decided I was going to do that as like a stair-step waterfall. I'm going to be putting oxygen back into my system as the water falls, using gravity to put oxygen back into the water. And every step, as it falls, I'm putting oxygen back into the water all the way down. I'm going to start at my sump tank. I'm going to pump up to my media grow beds. My media grow beds will overflow to my raft beds, and I will oxygenate the water in my raft beds as the water overflows from my flood and drain media beds to my raft beds. And then it will overflow from my raft beds. It will be continually overflowing to my fish tanks. I will put oxygen into the fish tanks, by gravity, just the fall of the water as it flows into my fish tanks. And then it will overflow to my biofilter, and by using gravity, I will let it put oxygen into my biofilter as it overflows in my biofilter, and then it'll overflow into the sump tank, and who cares if it puts oxygen in it or not? <laughs> it doesn't really matter so much. If I can, I will. I might even grow some duckweed in it if possible. Uh, hopefully that won't mess up my pump or anything, but uh, take my hat off, you can see, uh, hopefully I won't blind you to death. Uh, it's kind of hot out here today, which is better than the last time I was out here doing this and it was freezing. But anyway, so I want to give a demonstration. This was, you know, you're going to have to suffer through as usual watching my piecemeal videos as you watch the progress and hopefully we can learn together as we do this. And uh, I was hoping to show you the finished product rather than uh, torturing you like this, like I usually do, but uh, it occurred to me that there's probably, this is not something for those who are struggling with the bell siphon, uh, but there are plenty of you out there that know what you're doing, you know more than I do, and uh, you will quickly be able to tell what I'm doing and, and do it yourself, and so I wanted to go ahead and tell you about it today, because uh, it's, it's time, actually probably past time, to be building your aquaponic system, but uh, I figure there might be some of you that might, you know, have the knowledge to uh, want to tackle something like this. This is pretty difficult, 
I think I've explained it. I'll go over it again. The water starts at the sump tank. You pump it to your media grow beds. It overflows. Your flow and drain, your flood and drain media grow beds overflow to your raft system. We're going to put oxygen into the raft system and eliminate our air pump in our raft beds. I figure probably somewhere around four to one square foot of, ra of, of media bed to raft bed because you're going to want continuous flow or, or close to continuous flow to oxygenate your raft beds so you won't be able to have as many raft beds as you do media beds. But I, I'm just sort of guessing, you know, somewhere around three to four to one, somewhere in there, uh, square foot of media bed to square foot of raft bed. And so I want to demonstrate uh, that it does work. This was the test to see does it actually work because if I, it works in the sump tank, it ought to work here. It's a little bit trickier, and I've figured out how I wanted to do it. Uh, if you'll come over here a little closer, uh, please. And I figured out how I wanted to do it, and uh, it worked. I've already got it uh, underwater here, and I had to go with a larger pipe uh, right here, which I originally intended on doing, but I was just kind of redneck engineering things, and I kind of got it working, but with a bigger siphon, it just couldn't keep up, so I had to totally redo everything. And now I've got the water up above that, as you can see. And uh, I, I'm using, uh, it, it may work with just about anything that you want to use, but I don't know, I, I, I used these and uh, couldn't get them to work to siphon properly, so I thought they might do a good job of keeping the water from flowing back through on, the, on my raft bed. They are reducer couplings. It's a reducer coupling, so I'm, I'm taking a, uh, a larger coupling and it's reducing it down so that the water doesn't flow back through. And I'm, I'm putting air in. I had put air in from the top of that. And I really didn't like that. I wanted to, to be able to keep it like that. And uh, so we just broke siphon and uh, we got a siphon and a drain. And we're filling our bed up over here, and the water is still above that. As I said, you'll want to use a larger pipe down here to be able to hold the water and, and give enough pressure uh, and come up higher. And I'll check out my elevation here in a minute. I think I've got it uh, pretty favorable. I had it a little bit lower, and I wanted to see how high I could come up, and so I came up a little bit higher. And uh, I'll measure that in a minute. And uh, try to give you some, like I said, if you're struggling with the bell siphon, this isn't for you, uh, but maybe you can have fun watching as you learn, and uh, you might want to try it in the future. I know a lot of you guys, this is, you're probably already thinking of, of things you could do and things, you know, that I could uh, do to make it easier. I'd, I'd appreciate your input, but uh, I wanted to share this because I, I thought this was a, a worthwhile adventure, and uh, as you can see, I'm oxygenating over here uh, as I'm putting water back in over here and of course I don't have it and we got a break siphon break so everything seems to be working good we're uh, full of water here and the water's not going back through it can't and I don't have it set up to overflow continually yet I'm just you know does it work yeah it works all right we're at uh, we're going to do it a few more times because we're not at the desired height, but we're very close. we we'll do it a few more times, and I'm going to shorten that pipe. I just, as you watch my videos, you see I do a lot of redneck engineering. I go back and try to make things neat and cute later. Um, but I've just got it stuck in there and I haven't cut anything off or made anything exactly the way I want it to be. I've only got one pipe going into the bottom of this bed. I want to have multiple pipes going into the bottom of this bed so I can spread it out through the length of the bed and have multiple uh, beds draining into it. And uh, you know, so I'll put more pipes in my raft bed. Uh, from I'm doing it from the underside to try to keep them out of the way. Uh, you know, I don't know. We'll find out later if the roots are going to entangle around those. But I want to put a T and spread it out a little bit and uh, and have multiple. Uh, multiple bulkheads in the bottom that way I can have you know oxygenation uh, coming into the roots all the way down the system 
uh, not just at one point. And it looks like we're at a great level there, and it's still working. We got a break, and we got a complete drain. I love that two and a half inch siphon. It makes a little racket when it when it breaks. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's pretty loud. Uh, and we're at uh, probably about pretty close to. <laughs> we're we're going to be overflowing if we got too much more. So it works. It fills up your uh, raft bed uh, to the desired level. And then you just have your pipe, you know, for it to continuously overflow. And then from there, of course, it will overflow to your fish tanks and you'll oxygenate your fish tanks in the same way I did the sump tank, in the same way I have this raft system. And if you have multiple raft systems, you know, you'll be, you'll have plenty of water. You just make sure that you got enough water. Well, if you, if you know enough to tackle something like this, you, uh, you don't need me to tell you the rest of it. But you you uh, you want to make sure you got enough water, enough media beds to feed your raft beds. Like I said, roughly four to one, and make sure that that's enough. Make sure your media beds are enough to feed your fish tank with water and oxygen. And so you just make sure that your raft beds are enough to feed your fish tank and your raft beds because you're, you're, you're not pumping water to your raft beds. You're just pumping water to your media grow beds and then they're just overflowing and they're going to provide oxygen and water to your raft bed which will continually overflow and then you just make sure that you've got that's going to be enough water to uh, fill your fish tanks and keep your fish tanks circulated and oxygenated and I want to eliminate all of my air pumps including the air pump in my fish tank. I will have no air pumps. I'm just going to go and I'm going to try. I don't know if I can succeed or not. It's probably going to be tough. And I'm going to try to get somewhere between four and five. It's going to be hard to get five cycles per hour out of a four foot grow bed. Uh, I don't know if I can, but I'm going to make sure I've got a good solid four cycles per hour in my grow beds and try to bump it up closer to five if I can so I'll use a little bit bigger pump uh, for my media grow beds but I'm not providing any water for my pump to any other part of the system this all going to my media grow beds flowing and oxygenating downhill like a stair step waterfall to the to the raft bed to the fish tank to the biofilter to the sump tank so it's natural aquaponics, and if anybody wants to try it, and uh, have a blessed day.